I will not let my happiness or my depression be left up to chance. And too many of our lives are left up to chance and we just go with the flow. Today, we're gonna to be talking about my number one goal for 2022 and what I would hope that you actually adopt as your number one goal for 2022 as well. And I, uh, I adopted this frame of mind last year, this year that we're in 2021, and it was my number one goal. And usually when we sit down and we say, okay, these are my New Year's resolutions. This is what I wanted. I wanna work on my body. I wanna work on my business. I wanna make more money. I wanna have better relationships. I wanna be a better boyfriend, girlfriend, spouse. Uh, a better parent. You can look at all of those and all of those are great, but I have one kind of umbrella over all of those things. And I had it last year. I'm going to have it this year again. And this is to live my life in 2022 as if the very last day I'm going to be alive is December 31st, 2022. So my goal is to live every day like I'm dying. Every single day, my goal is this is my last day on earth. I'm going to live like this is my last day and I'm gonna have everything build up to as if this is my last year that I'm going to be on earth. Because ultimately, let's be real. I don't know if this is gonna be my last year on earth. I don't know if this is going to be your last year on earth and it very well could be. I say it all of the time, but 150,000 people didn't wake up from their sleep or didn't, 150,000 people that woke up yesterday did not wake up today. In saying that, knowing, okay, one day it's going to be the day. I don't know. Hopefully it's a long time from now. One day it is going to be the last day of my life, whether I realize it or whether I don't. And so I'm going to pretend like the year 2023 doesn't even exist. It doesn't exist in my mind. I'm never going to see it. I'm going to live like that. Now, hopefully I do see it, but I'm going to live as if it was absolutely the last year of my life. And in going through this last year with that number one intention, has shifted and changed a lot of things in my life. And I told you this last year that this was my goal, if you've been listening for a long time. And I'm gonna tell you that this year coming up, it is also my goal again as well. Because as I said, we're going to die. It's going to happen. And you're not going to, if, if this was the last year of your life, you're not going to do things that you don't wanna do. If I said, hey, today's the last day that you're gonna be alive, you're gonna take no actions today that are not things that you actually want to do. And this is important because if you've been listening to me long enough, you know that I live my life through a lens of if it's not a f yes, it's a f no. And so when you think to yourself, if this was my last day and I'm looking at my schedule and what I have to do today, would this be what I would do? Or would I do something different? Is my day, is today a full f yes for me? Like, am I so excited to go into my day or am I waking up kind of oh God, I guess I got to go ahead and do this. I guess I got to go to work, right? So if I've had those feelings before when I worked for someone else, there's nothing wrong with working for anybody. I'm just the type of person where I can't work for anybody. It's just not built into me. But if you're going to a job, when you're driving to your job, are you excited about the opportunities that you have? Are you excited about what it is that you're going to do? Is your job a full yes for you? Is your relationship that you're in a full yes for you? I've had people that have emailed me. It's kind of funny. Since the very first time that I did my yes, no episode about a year and a half ago. And they're like, I have changed so many aspects of my life. Uh, I have somebody who is a, a friend of mine that literally got out of a relationship, a long-term, it was like five-year relationship because they listened to the episode and they asked themselves, is my relationship that I'm in a full yes? And they started going through the aspects of it and thinking of it and saying, oh my gosh, it's actually not. Like I'm living in a relationship and I love this person and they're great. But if I look into to, to what the future looks like, if we stay together, am I like a full f yes, knowing that this is my one life? When you go through your day and you go through everything that you do throughout the day, ask yourself this question, is what I'm doing right now a full f yes? Like, is this something that I am a hundred percent? Yes, I love this. So when I wake up in the morning and I, the, the coffee that I drink, is it today? Is it, is it coffee for me? Does that feel like it's a full f yes for me? Or does today feel like a tea day? Like, I, you know, coffee, maybe it makes me a little bit more anxious than tea does. So maybe it today is more of a tea day. Or you know what? Today, it's actually neither one of them. I don't need the caffeine to get up. And it might be on the weekend. And you might say, you know what? I don't need to put myself into a little bit more of an anxious state. So is it the coffee that you drink? Is it a hell yes for you? Is it the food that you eat in the morning? Is it a hell yes for you? Is your morning routine, what's your morning routine look like? Is it a hell yes for you? Is it your, your workout process? Is it a hell yes for you? The people that you're spending your morning with, you know, if you're spending your morning and you're just going straight into work and emails and everything, and you're missing your kids when they leave for school, 
is that a hell yes for you? I have a lot of people that, that I've worked with in the past, one-on-one -on -one clients that are you know very successful people and they have great businesses. And what's really interesting is that their number one goal is just to be able to start taking their kids to school every single morning because they love that routine and their business has taken so much from them. They built a business to not have time to drop their kids off at school. And they just love having that present moment with them. So if you look at your morning routine, is there some changes that you could make that would be like, hey, this is a, a full hell yes for me. Like this is a full yes, this is what I wanna do. Or are there aspects of it that you would want to shift? Okay, going into work, whether you have your own business or you work for somebody else, is it a full yes for you as well? Like, are you like, yes, this is what I want to do. The times that I'm spending, my waking hours, this is exactly what I wanna be doing with my life. And all too often I find people settle. They do what they feel like they're supposed to do. And I understand if you have a family or if you have a house and you have bills that you have to pay, there are certain obligations that you have built, your, built into your life. I get it. I understand it. But what I always say to people is if, if your job is not like a, a hell yes for you, okay, well, what would be a hell yes for you? You know, can you make your job that you currently have or your business that you currently have like full on? Yes, this is what I want to be doing. Is there ways to shift that? Can you have a conversation with your manager about some of the things that you do so that your job can be more of a hell yes for you? Or are you working a job where you're just showing up, you're going to a cubicle and you're doing things that you have to do and you know that there's no way around it? Okay, maybe you look at that and you say, well, if this is my last day on earth, this is my last year on earth, I'm gonna live like I'm dying this year. And I know I gotta go to work because I gotta pay the bills if, if this is my last year on life, last year with life. Mm, can I do something that I actually love to do? Can I do something that feels like it's, it's work, working towards the right direction. So maybe it's like, you know, is there another job that might pay you about the same? Maybe it pays you a little more, maybe it pays you a little less, but you feel so good going into that job doing what it is that you're doing. Is it a hell yes for you? Is it something that you want to do? The, the, the route that you take to work, is it a hell yes for you? You know, maybe you've got a route to work that's the faster way, but maybe you could go a more scenic, more beautiful route that puts you in nature that feels better for you and you just enjoy that drive more. Sometimes enjoying the drive is worth the extra time. So like, I'll give you a good example. When, when we drive from Austin down to San Antonio to go see my fiance's parents, there's a route that will take us to San Antonio and it's about 15 minutes shorter if we take all of the interstates. Or we can drive through Texas Hill Country and we can see nature and it's beautiful and you can see the sunrise, you can see the sunset. And even though it takes 15 minutes longer, it makes the drive more enjoyable. We go the extra 15 minutes because it makes the two to two hours and 15 minutes a more enjoyable process. Is there a route that you can do in that that would be something that would better for you? The route that you take to work. When you get into your car, is your car like a full hell yes for you? I'm not saying you have to drive like a Lamborghini or a Ferrari or anything like that, but can you make the car that you currently have more of a hell yes for you? Can you make uh, make some adjustments and maybe change your car around a little bit? Or maybe just in general, is there another car that you could get that could be a hell yes for you? There's all these little teeny tiny changes that you start to go through in your life. You start to make shifts so that you actually enjoy what you're doing. I had a, a conversation with a, a friend of mine, very successful guy. He's in his fifties. And at the time he was worth about a hundred million dollars. And I was about to interview him for the podcast about five years ago, four years ago, whatever it was. And at that point in time, I was driving a 2007 Hyundai Santa Fe and I could afford another car at that point in time. But my, my mindset around this car was that I'm gonna run this freaking thing into the ground. Like I, I was getting pride in the fact that I was gonna run this thing to the ground. And he said, he said one thing to me that I'll never forget. He wasn't trying to talk me into anything, but we were talking about cars and stuff and he drives like a Lexus, nothing, you know, no Ferraris or Lamborghinis or any of that type of stuff. And he goes, you know what? I just find that when I drive a car that I enjoy, I show up better. Like I show up better for whatever it is I'm doing when I get there. And I enjoy myself more in that car. And he gave me this whole, how he feels. And immediately I was like, I gotta buy something else. And I told him this, I was like, I have to buy something else. And about a month later, I went and bought a truck cause I had, you know, found the truck that I wanted it, you know, got really good gas mileage compared to everything else that I'd seen. And I'd always wanted a truck my entire life. And I was like, you know what? I want to get this truck and I got it and I realized what he was talking about. Like I, instead of getting into my car and there's a, there's a energy in the back of my head of like, yeah, screw this Hyundai Santa Fe. It was like, I was actually excited to get into my car because I loved 
the truck that I had. And so there was this little shift and did it cost me more money? Sure. But what happened was I realized exactly what he was saying was true is that I showed up better to everything that I did. I wasn't, there wasn't a part of me that was like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna have to, <laughs> I'm gonna have to park my 2007 Hyundai Santa Fe in the back so nobody sees me driving my, you know, it's a light blue 2007 Hyundai Santa Fe, it's called the, the mom mobile because it looked like I was about to drop kids off at school or at soccer practice. And I don't have any kids, but I was driving the freaking thing around still from years and years and years when I was an outside sales rep because it used to store stuff really well. And I, I was kind of embarrassed by the car, but took some pride and I'm gonna run this thing to the ground. And then I, was, I had, had this conversation, I shifted. And I was like, I'm gonna buy something new, something that I enjoy. And I bought it and I was like, he's right. He was right, he was 100% right. I show up better the entire time that I'm driving. Like if you think of how many hours you drive over the course of an entire year, well, shouldn't those hours be more enjoyable? You know, the music that you listen to, the podcasts that you listen to, the YouTube stations that you can listen to as you're driving, like are all of those things yeses for you? If this was your last year on life, what would you be doing? Would you be listening to something that you enjoy more? Would you be filling your mind with something that makes you feel better so that you show up better so that you can impact more people? And so you start to think of all these little teeny tiny aspects of your life in the, the everything that you have and go, you know what, maybe I should shift this. Maybe I should change this around a little bit. You know, you look at the, the people that you work with, the people that are around you. Maybe you like your job, but you hate your coworkers. Okay, well, is there a way to shift that so that you can enjoy every aspect of your job more often? Is, uh, you know, the people in your life, the people that you hang out with the most, are you like full hell yes on these people? Or, and I, I put up a post on Instagram about this the other day, like you've gotta be okay with unfollowing some people from your life. Same way that you unfollow somebody on Facebook or Instagram when they're not, you know, they're, they're putting up too much posts that make you feel bad or they're not, you know, uh, they're just too negative or they're in the comment section talking trash with people and you can see their comments pop up when you're scrolling through Facebook because they went on, went on, went on a political post or whatever it is and started bashing people and you can see those things. Well, are there people that are kind of like that as well in your life where you're like, I shouldn't follow this. If this person were on Facebook and I saw the way that they're talking to people around me, I saw the way that they're treating myself and all of this, would I unfollow, would I block them on Facebook? And you start to look at the people in your life and change those things. The, the, the place that you go out to lunch, the food that you're eating, your drive home, are all of those things hell yes is for you? Or are they just things that you're just, you've been doing them for so long that your mind just kind of goes numb and you don't even pay attention anymore. And so you start to go through every single aspect, your drive home, your evening routines, right? Is it you come home and you just put something in the microwave and you spend two hours watching Netflix and then you just go to bed at 11 o'clock and you know, you're kind of tired and all of that stuff. Do you have an evening routine that fills you up? That makes you feel good? Do you, are you reading books instead? Are you journaling? Are you doing a short meditation an evening routine to set your subconscious up the way that you want to? Um, the time that you get in bed, the bed that you have, you know, like there's all of these little tiny things that if we were to go through with, with a fine tooth comb and try to pull out everything that we like and keep it and pull out everything we don't like and replace it, what aspects of your life would you change? Would you be like, you know what? I kind of hate my bed. I'm gonna get a more comfortable bed because this is my last year on earth. And start to change all of these things. You go through your life and find out what is a full hell yes for you and what is you know a, a, a hell no for you. Are you doing what you wanna do? And this is an important question I'm gonna ask you. And I ask this all the time. A lot of times when I'm on lives and I'm on Zoom calls and people are, you know, I literally did this earlier today. I was on a, a, a consultation call with somebody. I was consulting somebody who has a business and their business does a few million dollars a year. And I said, hey, talk to the CEO. And I said, hey, you know, we're going into really deep of, of things we're talking about here, but hey man, what do you want? And he's like, what do you mean? I was like, what do you want? Like, what do you actually want? When we're, we can build out the systems and the processes and the marketing and the sales team and all of this stuff, and we can help you with that. But what do you actually want? Because I don't want to build something and put, have you put a whole lot of time into something when you don't even actually want that thing. Because if you have something that you want, you're going to put hours into it and be more focused into making it better. If you have something that you don't want, it's going to make building this team, building this product that you're selling, building this offer, building the marketing behind it, putting the sales funnel together and putting the video sales letter and all those things together, it's gonna to be more energy consuming to have to force yourself to do it versus feeling like, hell yeah, I wanna do this thing. And so you look at it and ask yourself like, what do you actually want? And that's a great question to write down on pen and paper. Like, what do I want? and just make it as broad as you possibly can and answer that question. Then you can take the exact same question and you can put it into each aspect of your life. What do I want in my family? 
and then you can journal through that. What do I want in my body? What do I want in my health? What do I want in my relationships? What do I want in my business? What do I want in my finances? What do I want in the route that I take to work? What do I want in the food that I eat? What do I want in my morning routine? What do I want in my evening routine? What do I want to do with my free time? What do I want to do in my traveling? And you can go very vague, what do I want? And then just see what you want. And you get very granular and go, what do I want in my business? And you can say, okay, what do I want in my business? You could journal through it. You could look through it and say, okay, what do I want in my sales team? What do I want in my marketing? If you look at your relationships and you say, what do I want in my marriage? What do I want in my, uh, in my relationship with my children? What am I, what am my relationship with my mom and my dad, my brother, my sister, my cousins? What do I want in every single aspect of my life? And you start to plan out to build what would be the perfect life, knowing that you might not be able to take action on every single thing right now, but what do you want? Now let's go a little bit deeper. You look at every single one of those as well. And this is a great exercise. I implore all of you to do this. Please do this. Then you ask yourself, what do I not want? So what do I not want in my life? Uh, you know what? I don't want any more negative people. Okay, great. I don't want conversations that don't have the energy of transformation in them anymore. What do I not want in my relationships? What do I not want in my family? What do I not, not want in my business? What do I not want in my marketing? What do I not want in my... Uh, my sales process? What do I not want in every single aspect of what I do? What do I not want in my car? What do I not want in the drive to work? And you start to figure out what it is that you want and what it is that you don't want. You'll start to realize that you have a lot of processes and things that you go through and routines every single day that you don't even want to do. And if this were the last time that you're going to be like, this is your last day on earth, what are you going to do about it? Like, would you want to do those things that you don't want to do anymore? No. And so why would we act as if we have forever? Why would we act as if we have a million years on this earth? Why would we act as if we're just guaranteed tomorrow, if we're just guaranteed another year? And you start to build out what would be from this process, you start to build out the perfect day for you, the perfect life for you, and something that is going to be exciting for you to wake up and get into. And that's going to make every single day better. But what's going to happen is you're just going to start to notice that if you do this and you get very diligent on doing the things you want and doing not doing the things you don't want, you're going to start to actually realize you're building your perfect life. And I have a friend who, he was a number 30 employee in Facebook and when he got fired from Facebook right before they went public, a few months before they went public. And when he got fired, he lost all of his stock in Facebook. And if he would have just been there for a few more months when they went public, he would have made $180 million. And he went into a depression because he went from literally, you know, I could have made $180 million to I have nothing right now. And one of the phrases that will stick with me for the rest of my life is the thing that got him out of depression is he asked himself, what would make me happy? Like what would make me happy? And he made this massive list of all of the things that made him happy. And the, the phrase that he said that I'll never forget today I die, I will not let my happiness or my depression be left up to chance. And too many of our lives are left up to chance and we just go with the flow. He became very diligent on making sure that he looked at his happy list every single morning. He looked at his schedule next to his happy list every single morning. He said, how can I put as many of these things in here as possible? Like, what do I, what do I love? What makes me happy? Going on walks. Okay, how can I do a walk in the forest outside of Austin? Because we have a lot of trails around here. How can I do a walk today in that hour-long break that I have for work. And he started building in everything that makes him happy, everything that he wants into his life. And he started realizing that his depression slowly started going away because he wasn't doing anything they didn't want to do anymore. And so I want you to realize that your day will come, my day will come, all of our days will come at some point in time. It just makes more sense for us to live a life that we absolutely love, but it starts with living each day and the next year that we have living a life that we love. So be intentional with every single thing that you do and you will realize that you have built a life that you actually love. Hey, thanks so much for watching this video. If you want to learn even more about mastering your mind, click right here and watch this video as well. We are soft and we can admit that, can't we? A soft mind and a soft body does not change the world.